Hey everyone, my name is Sean Whitman and I'm here at House Fly Fishing in Hawley, PA and tonight I'm going to tie a caddis pattern um, that I've been calling the ostrich hair caddis for a few years now. Um, the hook I have in the vise is a Fulling Mill 5045 Jig Force. Uh, it's a size 16. The bead that I have on the hook is a 3mm tungsten bead and this particular bead is a House Fly prototype bead. Um, you can use a lot of different brands. We carry some from Fulling Mill also that are very good. Um, <clears throat> hook size range that I like for this fly is typically going to be within the 14, 16, 18 range and I like to run them with 3.2 or 3.5 millimeter beads depending on brand. Uh, 3 millimeter, 2.8s, again depending on brand or um, even down to like a, a 2.5 or a 2.4 millimeter bead. Um, those are my most common sizes that I like to tie and fish for this one. So to start things off, I've already, um, I've already gotten some thread on the hook here. Uh, this particular thread is a 6.0 Danville in black. Uh, you're free to use any other brand that you like. Um, I just like the, the 6.0 Danville the most. You can use hotspot threads for this pattern too, like a, a chartreuse or an orange or a, you know, even like a red might look kind of nice for this pattern. Uh, but I just am, I prefer to use black for this fly. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to tie in my first material, which is, uh, this is a size small wire in a chartreuse color. And I'm just going to tie this in halfway down the shank to get things started. From there, I'm going to tie, I'm going to create a little dubbing noodle with some hairy ice dub in caddis green. And this is going to make the, the underbody of this fly. Um, so first, I'm going to take just a couple of tiny little pinches. And as a new fly tire, this is one of the most difficult things I see in our fly shop is uh, people have a really hard time kind of uh, getting used to using dubbing at first. My advice is always to use less to start out with. So I'm just going to take a tiny little bit. I'm going to start making a noodle here. I'm just going to dub enough on to make a full body length's worth of this dubbing. Your first few times tying this fly, um, you know, you'll, you'll have to get the feel for exactly how much dubbing you're going to have to add to your thread, but again, following that less is more principle. You'll be able to add more dubbing later if need be, better than, uh, better than taking some dubbing off later. So the next material that I'm going to tie in is uh, a little tiny ostrich hurl. Um, I'm going to tie this in back to the rear of the hook along with the wire at the same time. And then my dubbing is going to start there right at the rear of the fly. This is just something I picked up on um, tying flies commercially. Uh, I kind of try to overlap steps sometimes during the process of making a fly to make things a little bit faster. So, you know, you could, you could cover the entire wire to the rear with your thread before adding the dubbing noodle uh, to your thread and then tying in the ostrich hurl after that. But for, uh, for speed, I, I just do it all at once. So, now that we have this ostrich hurl tied in and our wire ready to go too, I'm going to start by taking evenly spaced wraps about two millimeters apart towards myself with the ostrich hurl. And this is going to help create sort of like a, a buggy, um, gaseous, uh, like translucent effect for the fly. Kind of like, uh, kind of like, uh, like a, a Gary LaFontaine uh, sparkle pupa. This fly is kind of similar to that that style of fly. We're kind of going for creating a little bit of a, a flashy kind of translucent looking uh, caddis pupa pattern. So I've, I've wrapped my ostrich trail towards the front of the hook, captured it in right behind the bead, and now I'm going to take wraps using my uh, small chartreuse wire, um, evenly spaced again, I'm going to wrap this wire away from me. So if you notice, the way that I'm wrapping this wire follows the same direction as my thread torque that I'm using. 
So I'm wrapping the wire in the same direction that I wrap my thread. And the reason I do this is that when you wrap your supporting wire in the same direction that you're using your thread torque, it creates a much stronger, um, just a much stronger finish to your wire. It's going to hold in place much better. Just makes an overall more durable and uh, stronger fly in the long run. So at this point, um, you could even just add some dubbing and call it quits. But uh, this is the, the CDC version of the fly. So I'm actually going to use a couple different tools here to make a little CDC loop to uh, create a little bit of like a, a soft hackle veil for this pattern. So I've started off by just selecting uh, CDC feather. This is just uh, the bottom portion of a feather that I clipped um, and saved as scrap from uh, some dry fly production that I was doing. I like to save the bottom halves of my feathers uh, to put in CDC loops for use later and uh, it's a great way to kind of get double use out of a material. So there's a lot of different clamps that you can use for these for these uh, CDC loops, a lot of different loop tools. Um, I just have like a, a, a clamp here from Hairline. I also really like the Stonfo clamps which we sell. So I've got the CDC feather clamped here in my little tool and now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna trim those fibers on just one side close to the stem and you'll see after I trim this you still got plenty of fibers to work with for more flies going forward so it's a really good idea to save these these scrap pieces of, of CDC to use in patterns again later you could tie your mayfly and caddis wings with the tips and then later on use them in a nymph soft hackle. So now I'm going to take my loop tool and this is uh, really similar to a lot of other loop tools on the market. Again, I really like the Stonfo uh, Roto Twister, um, but I, I just don't travel with that one because it doesn't quite fit in my little tool case super well, just the, the tool case that I have personally. Uh, but I do prefer to use that one when I'm at home. So I've stuck my CDC in this little loop. I'm going to try to even up the butts and shorten them uh, so that the butt section of these feathers don't protrude uh, too far out of the other side. And I'm going to try to seat this CDC collar up towards the hook shank as close as I can get away with. And then I'm going to start twisting this up. And now we've got a little CDC hackle ready to wrap around the hook. I'm going to try to preen them all to one side and then I'm going to start wrapping. And you'll see it starts to make a really nice little soft hackle veil that's going to trap some air bubbles and um, uh, the, the pressure of the water is going to kind of cause this feather to sort of suck to the side of the fly body but that ostrichurl that's protruding from the the hook shank is going to kind of help prop it up and help you know create a little bit of a, an air bubble pocket in between the soft hackle veil and the fly itself so it's it's a really cool looking fly it's one of my more um, like natural kind of realistic patterns that I tie and fish. Most of the stuff I fish is kind of just generalist um, or even like attractor style nymphs. But this one is uh, is definitely more of a, a natural kind of a, a hatch matching fly. Um, so now that I've got my CDC all set up, you can leave it as is. I like to trim my CDC a little bit. Uh, the way I do that is I'll preen the feathers rearward the fibers rearward, kind of orient them all and make sure none of them are trapped under the hook. And then I'm going to pinch with my right fingers and I'm just going to pinch those fibers off like just past the body. Probably about a third of the hook shank, uh, a third of the hook shank's length behind the body is where I'm going to pinch those off. And uh, again, you could, you could just leave them as is, but uh, I, like, I like mine a little bit shorter. So now I'm going to take a little bit of ice dub in uh, UV black for the collar. You could use 
natural or synthetic materials for the collar on this. You could even whip finish right now, call it quits, but I like tying this in. It's got a little bit of subtle flash to it. If you brush this stuff out, you can create kind of like a buggy little leg effect. So I just have a tiny bit of this UV black ice dub on here and make a little noodle. And I'm just going to wrap a little collar here. And then I'm going to whip finish. Normally I would do one whip finish and I would use um, I would use a tiny little touch of uh, Zappa Gap brush on super glue, but I just don't have any in front of me right now. Um, so that's it. That's this fly pattern. Um, if uh, you're interested in buying any of the materials, you could find them at houseflyfishing.com. Uh, all the material names and alternatives will be in the description, and, along with links to purchase this stuff. So thanks for watching.